Hi, I'm Tanya O'Connell and I'm going to be taking you through how America seems to move from a globalisation to a localisation country. So here we have Donald J. Trump. He was voted the 45th President of the United States of America on the 8th of November uh, 2016. He launched his campaign in June 2015 against 17 other, other Republican candidates and on July 2016 he was voted the head Republican candidate to go in the presidential election against the Democratic leader Hillary Clinton. Donald J. Trump is currently the oldest and wealthiest president in United States history and he's described by many as a nationalist. Now his major agenda through his whole campaign was this slogan to make America great again. So his whole um, backstory about the uh, through, through, through the election was trying to bring jobs back to America and trying to make America powerful again. He wanted to bring back all the factories that had moved away to other countries, bring back all the jobs. And that's what one of his ma major slogans was. So, Trump's America. Trump has Trump wooed and wowed the middle, white middle class American voters by shrewdly focusing on two major issues. Number one, trade, and number two, immigration, that the American people were angered by the most. They, want, they hate the fact that all their factories and companies were going over to the likes of Russia and China, or China and Mexico where the companies were paying, uh, they could pay the workforce a uh, lower wage but they still produce the same quality and quantity of products. His main focus again was to bring all these factories back so he, so he told the American people as a politician whether it comes true or not, who knows. Uh, Trump's victory proved uh, to, to, to everyone that people who have nothing to lose um, will vote for something, anything, in order to um, in order in order in a bid to improve their lives. Um, Trump Trump completely bashed Trump completely bashed Mexico, uh, Mexico, China, and immigration, um, pledging to overhaul America's trade negotiation system with other countries. And he promised to deport 11 million uh, immigrants who were working in America, who he said, his quote, were taking American jobs. So, many economics warned that Trump's uh, get tough trade policies would cause both a trade war and a recession, which would batter all the voters, all the millions of voters who actually did vote for him. So said Michael Greenhouse at the Huffington Post 2017. Deporting 11 million immigrants in America would cause would cause wreckage to the U.S. system by it would devastate local communities and it would reduce um, consumer demand in the likes of the shop, shopping markets, uh, appliance stores, and car dealerships, and thus um, and thus cripple the American economic growth. So. Trump's desire to close borders to international markets um, could negatively affect the ability of major tech companies and startups to attract overseas talent. Jeffrey Gordon uh, is a professor of business law at Columbia University and he said it would mean less openness to relaxing visa restrictions on highly skilled foreign workers and thus you would have to pay more to the existing workforce and overall in industry dynamics would slow down. So, tech companies in particular like to bring in specialised workers on a H-1B visa, which I'll talk about later on, um, which allows uh, immigrants to work in the United States of America. So, Trump, Trump accused these tech companies of trying to go overseas and looking for cheap overseas labour, but the tech companies' response was that they were just looking for the hardest global talent. So, these tech companies included uh, Google, Apple, and Microsoft. So, according to the report by the National Foundation of American Policy, the United States has 87 startups that are worth over $1 billion, and over half of them have been started by uh, illegal immigrants. Uh, immigrants, or, sorry, not illegal. Uh, immigrants feature prominently in key management positions or product development teams in more than 70% of these startup operations. So that was a report by the National Foundation for American Policy. So the H-1B visa gives immigrants the chance to go and work in America uh, legally um, on a short-term basis 
uh, it allows US employees to temporarily employ foreign workers in specialty occupations and currently emits 85,000 immigrants each year. So it's a major visa in America that allows international workers to go and work in America um, legally. If a foreign worker in a H-1B that quits or is dismissed from his sponsoring uh, company, then they must enter and apply or for they must enter and apply for a new grant for a different application status under immigration. So okay. So on March the 3rd, 2017, the US Citizenship and Immigration Service announced on their website that they were temporarily and they're temporarily suspending the, the premium process for all their H1B visas. So they weren't getting rid of the H1B visa, but they were slowing down the process. There was going to be no more fast track visas. So again, it, it's going to make it harder. So this is only recently. So again, this is going to have a major effect for companies now who want to bring in international workers into America. So this is a quote from Donald Trump at the Miami University uh, in March 2016 in one of his many debates. So he said, I know the H-1B is very well. We shouldn't have it. It's very, very bad for the American people. And it's unfair to workers and we should end it. But then, only March this year, as he was elected, his views changed. He said, he said in an interview, I'm changing it and I'm softening my position because we want the best talent working in this country. So, on St. Patrick's Day Eve, Trump was pushed in an awkward position when our own Taoiseach in McKinney uh, trolled him on stage by suddenly calling out his immigration policy in front of the whole world. Now in his statement in McKinney he said, we would like this to be sorted, it would remove a burden of so many people that they could stand out in the light and say, now I'm free to contribute because America has a no, and that's, <coughs> and that's what people want. Currently um, there are over 50,000 uh, illegal Irish immigrants living in America. Thank you for listening to me today. I'm going to pass you on to Peter, who will talk to you about Brexit.